you know, mind, mind, do you mind, you know, mm -hmm. and, and even like matter, is matter what matters, you know, or is it meaning to have meaning, you know, all, all these different does it mean to have meaning? Yeah, I mean, I mean, people like keep saying that. What do you mean? Well, I mean, and does that mean, like, in terms of anger, or is it just uh, meaning in terms of like an average state of mind? You know, playing with these words, you get a little more insight into the collective effect of language on our mind, like you were saying with time. That uh, mine, minutes, even my minute is also minute. You say it differently. You know, like a second. You can also play second to seconds. Who's your second best? You know, are, are you uh, made into minutia by having your life divided into minutes, minutes, minutes? <laughs> Yeah, I feel like my life has been very much chopped up in, into um, pieces. Um, yeah, like because I've been like experiencing all this stuff um, just within me, and um, it's gotten to the point where it's gotten pretty damn complex. Yeah, that's what we're talking about here. Right but, um, so yeah, what, what, I really feel like, it, you know, like the more of the synchronicity is like coming, like, like, uh, like our conversations are like really, I feel like, like things are like really coming in. It's like my ego is being pulled apart. Um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like, uh, yeah, everything's been like broken down into like, minutia or like various cells yeah like a lot yeah I feel like a lot has been like broken up kind of like yeah um yeah but I'm very much on a piece with that because I've constructed so much I think everybody struggles with like the ego thing and guilt, but like if you forgive yourself, then you can forgive everybody around you. Has to do with like this major past life stuff. Yeah, in, in what respect? Um, having a certain task, having certain tasks, and um, I guess the balance between being serious and being too serious, like having a certain oops, destiny and um, having certain responsibilities with that. And I think in certain past lives I've been too serious about it and other ones I've been not serious enough where like I missed the boat and these things have happened with me now and like I'm just at a state where I just don't know exactly like where all this is and like also then at the same time I don't know like how much I'm creating and like what because I feel like I've always had the sense of urgency and the sense of um, the sense of having this mission if you will and that um, there's a time factor and yeah and like I've been driven by that and I feel like it's, it's already things already should have done, been done things already like I've always I've had that where like I've had this impression where like I the thing the feature that I've been seeing um, should have already been or I should have already been at this certain place and then because uh, a lot of it has to do with the fact that I've not been grounded in details and things, and like I've been physically ungrounded, I've like created this like spiral, where like I'm constantly trying to like anchor down, and I'm not.
I'm not. It's like, I think growing this will really, really explain. Let's put your uh, thought into the fortune cookie to get a reflection on it too. But what should I put into the fortune cookie? It's just like uh, you're feeling self-judgment and guilty that, that wow, you have Wow, I think this is what I was something like. This is like kind of like how something like this was like my energy where like literally like um, I was like trying to like I had like this spiral that I was making where like um, I was trying to like add this spiral in like my third eye and crown and uh, Yeah, where did you say the spiral is like a spectrum of emotions? My, no, my energy, like my, my chakras were making a spiral. Well, that's a spiral of a spectrum yeah, well, this, of emotions. This is, like all my, this is all my chakras together making a spiral. But like uh, within, like like for example, like for a while, and like I still have this at times, but like my third eye has made a spiral. Like um, there's something that, that uh, I don't know, I'll go into it later. Um, but it was like my third eye and my and my crown like made this spiral, and it has to do with like this whole um, what, what I call cognitive transmutation or cognitive alchemy, where um, by I, I went through this whole like alchemical process um, with my third eye and my crown, where um, all right I guess I'll, I'll explain this briefly, where um, I guess in the past, like when I was basically like as, as an atheist and um, emerging to an atheist, like I, I mean, when I, when I was when I was a teenager, basically like I built a very strong logical foundation in in my intellect. I, I and like it began with um, like when I was young, with uh, like when my dad like he would talk about all his political theories and like Illuminati all that. My dad was very much knowledge orient oriented and his knowledge was built upon a certain like perspective and um he was very yeah and he was very knowledge oriented and it would be oriented towards all right this is cool oriented towards a certain energetic perspective a certain, um, a certain yeah perspective and i saw that he was he was very perspective oriented and that um, he wasn't very logical, like he's not very, he's not he, oriented towards logic, but oriented, oriented towards his perspective and the knowledge that meets that perspective. And I saw this, and I saw that he's not, that he's very limited towards only one view, and that gave me the uh, capability to recognize, well actually, there's many different, and, and the thing is, I saw that, that, that other people have other views, I'm like, wait a second, there's all these different views, like there has to be one central view that incorporates all these views, and that made me driven towards that one view that incorporates all the views, so at a very, that, that energetically tones my, my, um, my percept, that, that, that toned my consciousness um, towards perceptivity over, um, over, I'm trying to think of a, a word for this, but like over knowledge orientation, factual orientation, I became perceptive orientation, where like I, I was, all my cognition was focused on like seeing things from a centralized perspective. And, um, and, and I saw, and, and like my whole um, orientation, like I, like I, I got this whole conception that I didn't, I kind of did away with knowledge and, and facts and details and I focused more on um, 
on uh, conceptuality, the conceptuality, the cent central conceptuality that um, connects all different orientations together. So I was always very conceptual, but not very good with details and detailed information. This has to do with um, detailed information um, with like facts, dates, stuff like that. So I've never been very good with that, but I'm very, very good with like overall conceptuality. And like, and I, that's, that goes to one thing where like, even though there's certain negative aspects to um, my conditionality that happened to me, like I was conditioned a certain way, um, but also like it gave me certain benefits where like it toned me towards being a certain way and it gave me a certain strength with that and like basically like there's so many details I want to go on there's so many things I've learned with all this that I wish I could go into right now but I can't because I'm trying to go to a centralized point so like basically yeah, I became very logical oriented and I built a very I had a very strong logical foundation but unfortunately like throughout my life I've never had the chance to really develop myself in terms of like details and like also um also like uh it's funny because right now I guess like like uh like language having like uh, an array of um language and um yeah I guess like having like a wide spectrum of being able to communicate ideas and like in terminology, and it's expanding like terminology and, it, and being able to express the various ways of, of uh, perspectives. Um, but anyway, it's like, like with my strong logical foundation, then I was able to project my logic into um, in intuition when I began to look at um, geometry and certain geometric forms, like, like basic geometric forms, I began to like look at them and look at the implications of certain ideas. And that opened up something with my, um, like looking at the implications of, of concepts. There's something about looking at implications of concepts that is a, is a blending of um, the left and right brain and uh, the third eye and the crown chakra. And the way that I was like, doing that, like kind of like opened up certain doors um, with like logic, like a, it's a bridging of logic and intuition and a bridging of, um, it's a bridging of like both sides of the brain and like that kind of like grew this spiral in my like, in my, in my like head and and third eye like literally and I, and I and I feel it and I felt it before it's very very strong but like now like I'm working with like that's the thing like like uh, the ways that we approach our physical reality and like the way that we've developed ourselves into and express express ourselves through like corresponds to the way that our chakras are energetically emanating and relating within each other. And um, I became very aware. Uh, like I feel, I felt all this, and I don't feel as strongly as now. I don't feel as strongly now, but I felt I was very much, very, very, very connected to all that. But now I feel like I'm moving outside of all of these um, tonings because I, I, I feel like there's validity to all the different ways that they, um, our chakras like orient within each other, and that they are like different tools. And um, anyways, like the astrological, the constellation, um, or like um, our astrological natal chart corresponds to like a lot of this, but um, basically um, that whole fusion of like the third eye and the crown chakra create this type of alchemy that I call it cognitive alchemy. And uh, 
Yeah, like has to do with like the blending of logic and the blending of um, intuition, perceptivity, and imp implications, symbology, and um, it was this whole. I, I could see that it was this alchemical process that I built upon my entire, like, uh, well, my yeah, my my uh, my cognitive development, like, built this cognitive, this uh, this alchemy. Um, and it led to many, many things that I've experienced that I've built within me, which now, like, I feel like a lot of it has kind of, like, dissolved. Um, not dissolved, but, like, a lot of things have been broken up because, um, I guess I'm starting, like, another phase of alchemy that's kind of, like, um, incorporating everything, it all, all my experience. But I see that everyone is experiencing, everyone is their own alchemical process. And I think that as we become more, as we become aware of the, of, of, um, that we're doing this, basically we are doing this, uh, like, on our separate conscious level of consciousness, that's what we're doing, but when we, when we become aware, when we become conscious of the alchemical process that we are, like, for example, when people feel a sense of, like, they've died, and that they've been reborn, um, like, uh, for example, like, they're, they're, I'm falling apart, I'm falling apart, da -da 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 -da, my life is falling apart, and then it leads to something new. It has to do with like, the fact that they're going through, that's what they're doing to themselves alchemically. And I feel like we limit ourselves to the different alchemical um, pathways that we can go based upon what we know, based upon what um, we're conditioned, and that our our separate conscious mind, our separate conscious mind directly is connected to our soul. It is our soul consciousness. It is, and our soul consciousness um, is uh, has certain limited sight. And actually, our, our soul consciousness becomes more and more aware over our lives. And um, but when we are able to expand and give more light, direct awareness to our separate conscious mind, then we have more ability um, to be able to, um, more ability to uh, not need to go through certain, we can directly, you know, do out, you know, our alchemy, our soul processes. Wow, yes. This is really cool now because like all these, basically I've cultivated all these bits and pieces of information and I've not been able to see it because I've not been able to communicate any of that. And um, I'm afraid to um, because like it's a very vulnerable thing. It's a very, very vulnerable thing to be doing. Um, but I feel like I've, I've actually, like I've actually allowed myself to um, to follow like a, like certain things I've experienced right now in my stage of alchemy where like I've actually like over the last the, the whole psychic vampirism that I've um, experienced in my life I mean like within the last number of months um, like it, it's opened up a door to um, basically question, like, well, is this my own, am I, is this some kind of karmic thing? Is, does this have to do with, like, um, a dark side of myself? Um, that I have to, like, face or something? Um, and I realized that, um, basically I began to see, like, oh, like, is there a dark side of myself that I've been, oh, yeah, I've been rejecting a dark, dark side of me that I have a dark side. But the thing is, like, we don't really have a... See, that, that's why, I, like, I really... We really need to have a new type of way of discussing this. We don't really have a dark side. Like, like it's what... We've, we've um, defined self-orientation as dark. Like, self-orientation is only dark if it's only towards self. And also, when you're exceeding beyond the boundaries of other people for your own self-interest, that's 
darkness. Where like that is selfishness, that is evil. When you're exceeding the boundaries of other people for your own interests without having any consideration um, for other people, like that is that is um, evil. And um, and the thing is, I have to say that um, certain things, um, certain experiences within myself has given me um, the sight and understanding of what evil is because um, I've experienced evil and then I've questioned myself of, um, I've questioned myself, um, like, is this, like, my own self or whatever, or, like, or something like that? And, um, anyways, but I could see that, like, I feel like I'm bringing myself a lot of different things so I can have a, a full, rounded embodiment of all different types of creation within myself now. And I feel like that's what we're doing, like, right now, like, like, like so many of us in our lifetimes now, like, we're doing that, we're allowing ourselves to experience different things so we can have a full spectrum experience of existence embodying that within our lifetime now. Like just like right now is like this this peak climax of consciousness in this chapter of reality. But I have to say that like I've intentionally exceeded beyond my own personal um, evolution into direct um, direct um, exploration of like existence itself um, and cosmology itself but I feel like I've gone so far just being in a sea where um, just being in a in a seed. Okay. And that, um, it's been very, it's been very different. It's been like, I don't know, so it's fine. Um, it makes me think of like the whole Genesis thing. We're like, with evil, like some people equate, you know, the apple of evil to knowledge. So it's sort of like maybe you have to experience evil in order to evolve and gain yeah. the knowledge of the reality of mm -hmm. universal principles. So. And yeah. it's, maybe it's no accident that evil and evolve <clears throat> sound so much alike. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, I think everybody experiences evil and like that evil is done to them and that they do evil. I mm -hmm. mean, like maybe some more than others. And then there's a whole debate of like, well, you know, I mean, you could go on and on and on about that. But I think like if you just, all right, assuming that evil is real, I mean, I think everybody is subject to it and therefore they, you know, like commit evil acts. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if you learn from it, and then you learn to like be empathetic and not hate other, yeah. and not hate people who are evil, then that is like the solution. Like that's the cure. Yeah. When you know you can like assimilate what it is and have empathy, mm -hmm. and like then you can evolve. You know, I mean, some people are like all about evil and like worshiping the devil, and like that's mm -hmm. like their life's mission. It's like they're all all about evil. Like I don't really understand that. I mean, it, but it, see, like it's strange because like that's the thing. Like um, in the past, in, in the recent past, like when I when I felt um, like I, I built all this like like divine perceptivity, if you will, where like I just saw the unity of everything. I saw. I saw like this perfection that was behind both good and evil. I, I didn't see evil in a negative way. And I saw that like I guess what I see, what I see, um, e even right now, like in terms of how, like this whole, uh, in terms of like the kingdom of heaven being over here on earth, I see that 
um, all traditions would represent himself um, in this in, in a kingdom of heaven, if you will, here on earth. And that tradition that um, that um, like there are darker traditions, but there's a difference between like darkness and, and evil, where like well, for example, like like uh, dark music, dark music, um, like black metal and like death metal is simply they are the expression of negativity um, through music, and that it is expressing those emotions to release them, and that actually they have a place, and that they are like in, in a sense like giving love to the darkness, and that that actually. That's good, um, but if if darkness exceeds over and imposes over people, then that's bad. But darkness itself, or for example, like like um, dark emotions in the sense of uh, sadness, loneliness, all that, they have their place in reality, and that they're they're fine, and that they're like you know a good thing. They're they're a key in the spectrum. That I guess I see like. Kingdom of Heaven emerging here on Earth, like every single key, every single emotion would have its place, and to that um, certain people, certain traditions would like basically be the um, like the the expressors of that emotion. I see like it's kind of like this vortex. Like I see like I see these different like temples, if you will, in, in the Kingdom of Heaven, where um, each each temple would be this embodiment of um, the harnesser of energy. They would be harnessing the energy of like this temple would be harnessing the energy of, um, of devotion. This one would be harnessing the energy of inner stillness, you know, Buddhism. This one would be harnessing the energy of like um, like darkness in the sense of the darker emotions, and it's been like Hindu, Hinduism already has has been doing that. Like where like each temple, like each deity, like each deity is an embodiment of a certain, um, certain collective energy and a certain archetype, a certain emotion, and that every one has their place in their um, in, in their um, society, and it's just a matter of like that whole relationship's taking place. Um, on a on next spectrum of, of, of humanity, where it's in the, the, that, in the next spectrum, which would be globally. And it's coming to recognize that each tradition is like, you know, expressing different things. Um, but, I forget what I was going through, but, um, while well, we got so off track, we were gonna look at 9/11 videos. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, like, I, I'm getting more and more on track with, with like, I, I think this is kind of like needed today. Yeah, um, this is definitely good. good. It, yeah. Yeah, life should be multifaceted, and everything yeah. should be a mixture of healing, therapy, exploration. Yeah. You know, uh, learning, teaching, it's all merged into one. It's, and if you see it that way, then every moment is, is this hyper-dimensional thing where you're acting and reacting and creating and learning and healing and healing others and healing yourself. And it, it's always a multifaceted thing. It was fascinating listening to you talk as I scanned through your chart. I don't know if you realize this was your chart. No. Yeah, it was your chart. And a lot like there was points where what you were saying, the words were coming up in the really? in the instruction in the you know, in the analysis of it. It's it's pretty fascinating. <laughs> this yeah, is like a really cool cool sweet. thing here, you know. Yeah. That you could like interview someone and at the same time be looking through their chart and really unconsciously you'll pick the things that they're talking about. And, and then you'll see, you know, ways that it all interconnects. Like another interesting thing would be to bring to this discussion at the 9-11 thing, bring in the electric fortune cookie and bring in the astrology. You know, like we could, I think I may have the astrology I think, well, I think of 9-11. the difference in the discussion is that it might kind of like get things a little bit out of 
out of focus from like the main subject. I think that'd be good for like another for like. But if we want to prepare for tomorrow, yeah. we should look at the the scientific facts. I guess. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Well, this but the scientific fact of the astrology of nine one one um, is its own thing. When I looked it up years ago. Um, it was unbelievable. There were so many squares with Jupiter. I yeah. mean, with uh, Saturn, Pluto uh, squared. There was like signs of war, signs of, of mass destruction. It was, it was pretty uh, astonishing how many connecting things there were with, with the astrology of 9-11. Look, it won't come up. Maybe I spelled it wrong. Yeah, I, I, I have to say that I. Yeah, I'm looking for. This is weird, so on, but um, I guess like yeah, I'm down with like, getting into the nine eleven stuff. I feel like I feel much more clear to do that anyways. I think the law is clear, and it'll be much more. Um, we'll be much more successful in uh, doing that. Yeah, sometimes you gotta like get out all the stuff that is distracting you in your mind. So it's like now I feel like I'm ready to focus on 9 11. I got, I said everything I want to say about all the stuff I've been thinking about. Hopefully we'll be able to connect. We could um, like try to, I mean, are you hungry? Anybody? Um, Slightly, yeah. I don't feel hungry, but I feel like I should be. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we have food. We have uh, we have three chunks of salmon. We have uh, a bunch of stuff. I don't mind cooking. Is it coming up? No, I it can't. They it won't uh, give any matching? new. Uh, they won't give a new web. Uh, I feel like you know, and, and plus, like, I feel like we we have time to work on this. Like, I guess. Um, yeah, we have time. Like, I'm basically I'm free until I'm free until. Um, no, the, the whole meeting anyway, so... Uh, well, tomorrow's the meeting. Yeah, yeah, I mean, until like 6 o'clock or whatever. It's so, like before, I guess, do you, you guys have any plans for tomorrow? I mean, as we go further into the night, like, I'm thinking about, like, tomorrow, like, it's, you know, we can work on it. As yeah, well I mean, you tomorrow. can stay over if you want. Cool. Yeah, there's this couch here that unfolds, or you can just sleep on it. Sweet. And uh, food-wise, we can either make something or order from the local Chinese joints. They're close by. Either way. Uh, I feel like I still feel like the sense of pressure with uh, this whole destiny thing. Because like I built up all these energies, and um, I feel like and it was like I had a lot of opportunities to like open up and. Uh, Lost them, and that. Um, anyways, they. Uh, I didn't go through with them because of certain reasons, but um, now. Um, Like just like another alchemical thing. Well, we can, we go through the same stuff. Like we were like, oh, we gotta make these videos and write these letters and try to get in touch oh. with people who can help us promote it and you know do like laboratory experiments with the ESC and stuff. And it's kind of like it's really hard to focus. Mm -hmm. But I I don't know. I'm not gonna beat myself up over yeah. it because it's not gonna be productive. And I figure mm -hmm. you just kind of gotta be patient and things will fall into place. I mean, you got to make them happen, you know, you can't yeah. wait around for it, but as long as you, uh, you know, stick to it. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like, I, like, like now, like, I'm dealing with um, certain core fundamental things that have been making it difficult for me to, um, to focus, um, and that's simply, like, you know, my, my physical life and the kind of, yeah. I'm just like, yeah, I'm doing what I can, uh, and, and like, 
you know, I know like what I know what I need to do um, to uh, bring myself to where I need to to be to be like uh, focus. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like I don't. It takes time to gather all the information and experience and everything you need to experience before you have like an evolved theory or something that you know you're ready to present or an course of action that you're going to take. Like you want to be prepared and be knowledgeable so that you know. Go smooth. Yeah. Sometimes I get nervous though, I'm like, it's going to be too late, like 2012 is going to happen, and I'm going to be so lazy, and like, I just, I, I don't know, I do worry about stuff like that, like I'm just going to watch everything happen and not even really partake in it to the extent that I want to, because I'm lazy sometimes, but I don't know, I get sudden bursts of energy and I get a lot done at once, so I'm not that worried. I just know that I have to... I have to live on my own, like, I have to, like, live on, on my own, or, like, you know, live, live, like, you know, fly for myself, like, that's the major thing, and then, um, and then do some more, you know, work, like, work on, work on this stuff with, like, people, um, yeah, and just, like, dedicate my time to it. As I, like, and I have not, I can't focus, like, um, you know, just where I'm at with my life right now, that I need to, uh, yeah, be in my own space that I'm, like, providing for myself. Or at least, you know, bring myself to a space through my own actions, you know, be, be at a space where um, I brought myself to based upon my own actions or whatever, like a sense of earning, a sense of earning wherever I go next. Well, it's only natural to feel that, that's for sure. You do have to deal with those things.